My name is Bruce Richardson. I'm currently Chief of Rheumatology at the Ann Arbor Veterans Affairs Hospital and affiliated with the University of Michigan. I'm a basic researcher uh, investigating mechanisms which cause human lupus. Now, what our current interest is with the support of the Lupus Foundation uh, is to look at why men get lupus. The reason we're asking the question is that 90% of lupus patients are women. There's been work performed over the last several decades which shows that estrogen is important in predisposing women to develop lupus. More recently, reports have started to appear that having two X chromosomes also will predispose you to lupus. Throughout this time, men have been neglected. Why men should get lupus at all when estrogen and having two X chromosomes is important does not address why men develop lupus. However, when men get lupus, it tends to be more severe and can be more difficult to treat. One of the more recent breakthroughs in lupus is that the environment can affect people uh, through what's called epigenetic mechanisms. Let me explain to you what epigenetics is. It's a bit of a difficult concept, but it underlies many of the cellular processes in your body. Uh, it's known that every cell in your body has 9 to 10 feet of DNA. However, the cells are so small that they have to be seen under a microscope and those 9 to 10 feet of DNA are confined within the nucleus of the cell, even a smaller structure. In order to get the DNA packaged into the, the cell, it is uh, super coiled. It's coiled many times upon itself, much like a slinky, uh, so that it can all fit into the, in the cell. This creates a problem for the cell in that, that packaging is so tight that it's difficult to get other molecules in there so that you can synthesize the RNA and get gene expression to occur. So for any gene which a cell needs to express, that uh, region of the DNA needs to be opened up. Uh, that coiled structure needs to be separated somewhat so that the proteins can get in and molecules can be expressed. Uh, genes that a cell does not need are left tightly packaged because they could be inappropriately expressed at the wrong time or the wrong place. And the, every time a cell divides, these marks on the DNA, which signify where the DNA is to be opened up, have to be replicated. Uh, so every time a cell divides, genes which the cell doesn't need need to be maintained in a tightly packaged configuration, while those genes which the cell is going to express needs to be opened up. The molecules which mediate that, there's marks on the DNA, it's called uh, DNA methylation. The regions to be, remain silenced are methylated. The regions which are to be opened up are unmethylated, and the, these serve as signals. However, those methyl groups come from what you eat. And every time the cell divides, if you haven't been eating well, for example, the marks will not be put on and you'll get inappropriate gene expression. And there are other factors involved also, but this is a very environmentally sensitive portion. And current evidence suggests that problems with these epigenetic mechanisms leads to leakiness and expression of the wrong genes in the lymphocytes from patients with lupus. Now, there's many things which could potentially affect the chromatin. Uh, some drugs that people take, uh, like procainamide or hydralazine, are known to cause lupus in some people. But it turns out that both of those drugs inhibit this process. Now, procainamide inhibits the enzyme that puts the methyl groups down, while hydralazine prevents uh, turning on the gene for that enzyme, which puts the methyl groups down onto the DNA. Now, ultraviolet light will also prevent the methylation of, of DNA. Uh, it's possible that many other things in the environment which work like hydralazine or procainamide could be inhibiting the enzyme. As people age, the levels of that enzyme decrease, so the chromatin structure gets leakier and could possibly play a role in the development of lupus as well. Our hypothesis was that uh, men having normal estrogen levels in one X chromosome would have to have one of two th or maybe both uh, problems going on uh, at their DNA level. It's known that genes predispose to lupus and it's possible that men that develop lupus have more of those genes than men that don't. Now, the other possibility is that this process of uh, epigenetic mechanism of DNA methylation is known to 
be related to disease activity. As lupus flares, DNA seems to demethylate. It can also be shown that if you experimentally demethylate cells and put them back into an animal, the animal gets lupus, so we think that demethylation causes it. Uh, this would suggest that one other potential mechanism why men would get lupus more uh, when uh, they lack other predisposing things is they have a greater degree of DNA demethylation. So the, the two parameters or variables that we're looking at in the study are the total number of genes which a given man with lupus has that might predispose him uh, to developing lupus and how that relates to how extensive the DNA demethylation is in his lymphocytes. Now, our hypothesis is that they have e require either more lupus predisposing genes or a greater degree of DNA demethylation or both uh, to develop lupus compared to a woman with a similar uh, activity in her lupus. At the moment we don't know how to fix genes that uh, people have. Uh, we can interfere and improve DNA methylation. Since the degree of DNA demethylation is strongly related to the severity of a lupus flare, we actually think that the severity of a lupus flare will be proportional to the degree of uh, demethylation as well as the number of predisposing genes that the man has. What we would like to do in this study is compare men and women with lupus flares of similar intensity. We think that the men will have greater DNA demethylation uh, than women at that, uh, with that degree of uh, flare as measured by an index called the Systemic Lupus Erythematosus Disease Activity Index, or, or SLEDI. If we uh, confirm our hypothesis, what we will find that the men do have more DNA demethylation compared to women with similar disease activity. This will do two things. It will suggest why men get lupus, but it will also confirm the hypothesis that the DNA demethylation is causing the disease and is directly related and likely responsible for the disease flare. The uh, implication of the research is that preventing the demethylation of the DNA uh, will prevent lupus flares. And this may be as simple as adjusting the diet. Uh, more methyl donors, this is folic acid, methionine, choline, uh, other nutrients uh, could be important and may reduce lupus flares. The other aspect here that, that is known is that the enzyme which puts the methyl groups on the DNA, uh, it, the levels are low in the cell. And a better understanding of how that enzyme is regulated and why it's decreased in lupus will suggest ways to prevent those decreases. Our preliminary data right now uh, suggests that the decreases are, are caused by signaling problems within the cell, and in particular, uh, a signaling molecule called PKC delta, which doesn't work in lupus patients. Discovering why that molecule is inactive and that degree of inactivity is related to disease activity will suggest how we could prevent the de decreases in the, that enzyme. Uh, it may not just be folic acid. There are many nutrients involved in the transmethylation reaction, which uh, the enzyme catalyzes. catalyzes but uh, supplementing uh, methionine, folic acid, betaine, choline, uh, all could play a role. We, there is also evidence that homocysteine uh, which accumulates in the bloodstream of some patients, uh, inhibits DNA methylation. And decreasing homocysteine levels may also be an approach to treating or preventing flares.